Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Lock Key TB100. This is called a Turtleback Closer, or Gate Closer. Um, you know, I've not really heard this called many other things. If it's if someone's using the term Gate Closer, that could be a lot of things. It could be a you know something that's hydraulic that's been mounted to the unit. It could be something that's in the in the ground like a floor closer it could certainly be um, a um, surface mounted spring that you would have on the jam post and on the gate itself if someone uses the term turtleback I think that's what the manufacturer is kind of referring to when they say this type of item um, let's start with a visual tour first obviously the business end of this unit this is what's going, going to of course this will uh, compress actually when the gate is um, cycled from closed to open and then back closed. The springs, this entire apparatus will of course um, get taller basically as the door is opened and then uh, as the door releases or goes back to closed. So here's the business end of this couple of springs, your control via your valve adjustment knob here, some basic dimensional properties just to put this into some sort of scale about eight and a quarter inch overall height and overall width is about 11 inch uh, we're going to have of course the cover for that unit that's going to snap right onto a little bit of shipping damage here on the cover plate okay not as awful as it was that does indeed simply snap onto there. I suppose that's where the turtleback sort of moniker comes from. You're going to have your jam post. And I'm going to go through the dimensional properties just quickly. Height of the jam post, about an inch and seven eighths. Overall projection of the jam post, looks like it's about two and three quarter. Uh, overall width, about an inch and seven eighths as well. Yeah. Then you're going to have your anchor bar. I didn't know if it was anchor plate or anchor bar. Overall width of that about 10 and 7 eighths. Overall height about an inch and three quarter. Then you're going to have a whole mess of fasteners. You're going to have a anchor connector plate. For that you're going to need a pin, a cotter pin. Pardon me, a, a, uh, a clevis pin and a cotter pin that will go together. You're going to have a couple of plastic washers and then a steel washer for that application. You're going to have two 5 8 length screws for attaching the anchor connector plate to the face of the door. You're going to have three anchor pins or hinge pins I suppose with nuts to go along with those. You're then finally going to have four hex cap screws for attaching the, uh, the hinge bracket to the gate post. Now, why are you looking at this? What might you be using this for? Let's go over that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. So we've done a visual tour. What are you gonna use this for? Well, you're gonna see literally this type of, um, they call hydraulic, um, closer installed in really you see install I see it mostly installed in hotel pool areas in the perimeter of fencing and pool areas this has been sold to residential clients who literally want their gate to close behind them they've seen it and they want something like this that works um, and those are the applications uh, either it needs to be self-closing for safety reasons um, and you want it to be self-closing uh, which covers both of those applications uh, or you just simply want your gate to close and this is a relatively easy approach to getting a non-standard door and frame construction to close and what I mean by that is you can have steel doors wood doors standard types of frames and there's lots of hardware that will close a door whether it be a surface mounted hydraulic closer overhead concealed or a floor closer or spring hinges or some sort of you know, derivative of a, a closing device. 
but in a gate application, you're not afforded the same sort of real estate that you would otherwise need to get traditional hardware installed. And that's where something like this comes into play because it's literally meant, it's built to be installed into a gate structure by means of all of the apparatus that come with it. The mounting brackets is what I refer to, okay? And that is, again, your, your jam post and then your anchor plate. Okay, these two pieces are the primary components that you need to get everything attached. And what ends up happening is it will ultimately look something like this. Okay, where that's all attached. Now imagine that the cover's on there. Well, when the gate goes to open, it's going to open like this and then close back. And that's all going to be put together and it's going to be installed so that it looks like that. Obviously, your cover will be on there. Okay. So we've gone over all of the parts that are in the box. We've done a basic dimensional review of all of the parts. Let's switch now to the screen view and let's just walk through the installation instructions and I'll narrate the steps and perhaps just take the edge off of wondering what part is, is which. Uh, so let's switch to the screen view now and let's do that. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, let's take a little dive into this item. Here's the item that we're looking at. Let's first look at some photographs that we have uploaded here. There's the box. Just another view. The contents. Obviously, the spring assembly, your gate post, your anchor plate, your fastener package installation instructions. This is your valve adjustment knob up here. It's a bit cropped in this picture, but it's here. There isn't one down at the bottom. A couple of springs. Obviously, that's going to um, compress. Just showing that assembly alone. Better view on that valve adjustment knob. That's where the hinge pin goes into, whether it be in the anchor plate or in the jam bracket. Little side view showing you the thickness of what the item looks like. Your, what they call your hydraulic cylinder. Everything else, the anchor plate, the cover, the jam bracket, and then your fasteners. Okay. So, turtle back gate closer gently closes both large and small gates up to 125 pounds. It's adjustable closing speed that's regulated by that valve adjustment that I just mentioned. And it can uh, be installed anywhere on the unit that you like, depending on how the construction of the gate lends itself. You know, you're going to pretty typically see it installed in the middle of the gate. Um, but wherever you have space onto which to install the anchor plate is where you're going to end up installing that. And, of course, the jam bracket. Pool, garden, barrier gates. You're putting a pool in a residential area. The, you might get approval on the pool, but they'll require that that be self-latching and self-closing and self-latching. Okay, let's dive into taking a look at the installation instructions. Um, after we looked at the photographs. So, you know, there's a lot here. Um, but after you read it once and then go back to it a second and third time, it becomes pretty straightforward. So I'm going to basically narrate this and maybe take off some of the rough edges um, of the understanding of how to go about doing it. So the Lockkey Turtleback TB100 is a hydraulic gate closer designed to push a gate closed with adjustable hydraulic speed control. Before installing it, read the instructions completely. Confirm that the gate is in good working order and operates smoothly. If not, repair it. So that's a pretty typical um, blanket line that you're going to hear in the door hardware industry. If your door doesn't swing freely, if it doesn't close by just manual pressure and stay in the closed position, if it doesn't operate without obstacle or if it creeps open or creeps closed or if the frame's not true plumb level and square 
or if the door is racked or warped or bent or damaged. Applying a closer is not going to fix that. Um, and if anything, you might exacerbate the um, poor original condition of the unit by adding a closer. So make any mechanical repairs before trying to slap on something that's trying to force the thing, the gate closed. So they start this out um, with some wit, I suppose. At least that's the way I read it. You've got to install this on the hinge or the pull side of the gate in order for it to push the gate closed. So that's an interesting way to state. It's got to be mounted on the side where you're going to pull it towards you or what would be called the opposite of the stop side. Um, you know, you, you've got to be able to pull it towards you because that when you're pulling the gate towards you, compression or the springs will be influenced. And when you release the gate, the springs will uh, release their stored energy and cause that door to move closed. So it's got to be mounted on when the door's in the closed position, what we would call the pull side of the door. I say that in that pedantic sort of way because I've had customers argue with me, or one or two maybe at the most, well, I don't know what side the pull side is. Well, what do you mean you don't know what side the pull side is? And their reference is, is the door open or closed? We're assuming that the door, or in this case, the gate is in the closed position. So in the closed position, mounted on the pull side or the side that you would pull to get it open. So let's move right into the thick of it here. Um, installation instructions. Place the anchor bar on the gate with hinge bracket on post. So you're going to take your hinge bracket and there's going to be two preparations to receive pins. You're going to install the pin that's closest to the... Working this live. Bear with me one moment. We're going to pull those images back up just to look at them to show you what that bracket looks like. So this is what's going to mount to the back side, to the face of the post. This pin here, or this preparation here and here, that's going to be nearest to the gate jam itself, or to the, the um, it's going to be nearest to where the edge of the post meets the edge of the um, edge of the gate. This is your gate post in here. That's your gate, or your, pardon me, your post. Your, gate, your gate's gonna sit in here. It's literally gonna look like this. You're gonna run a pin through here, then that anchor plate's gonna go over here. You'll have a prep out here then the spring doodad, the entire spring, the business end, as I called it earlier, gets connected between here. That's how that's all going to work. The anchor plate's going to end up mounting to the face of the gate itself over here, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, okay, so place the anchor bar on the gate with the hinge bracket on the post. And they are telling you to align the edge of the hinge bracket with the edge of the gate post. They don't really show it here, lined up to the edge. Um, it does occur to me that they might be meaning this outside radius area here. And uh, I would be tempted to say that that's correct because you want that gate to come out and swing and you don't want this to be the edge up here because you might get to a degree of opening where the gate can no longer open because this is projecting into the opening. So I would flush this bellied area out if you'll forgive the lack of technical terms, the bellied area, this area here. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> mark and drill a 3 16 hole in any one of the four holes for the bracket. <clears throat> Insert and tighten one screw. If the wood, if, if your post happens to be round, you're either going to need to weld a bracket to it <clears throat> or mortise it so that the hinge bracket mounts flat to the face of your post. You'll have to do that. I think one thing they've not really mentioned is you're going to need to kind of connect these two pieces. 
So this bracket, the hinge bracket will get flush. You'll mount, you'll drill one hole and then attach a screw and leave it right there. With the hinge bracket attached and the gate closed, swing and hold the anchor bar against. So by this time, this is already connected. You've got one pin going through there and the anchor bar is actually hanging out there. So place anchor bar and gate with hinge bracket on post. So, you know, they're not saying run a pin down through there, but I'm saying run a pin down through there. With the hinge bracket attached, with one screw, the gate's closed, swing and hold the anchor bar against the gate and trace the outline of the anchor bar slot. This long slot inside of here, they want you to put a pencil in, <clears throat> forgive me, put a pencil in there and trace all that out. Put a mark on the face of your gate with your pencil. Swing back the anchor bar and mark a vertical line three quarter back from the end of the anchor bar slot, furthest from the hinge. So on the face of your door, pardon me, on the face of your gate, bear with me. Here's your gate. You're gonna trace that slot on the face of your gate. You're gonna put a pencil mark at three quarter inch from the edge to the center line of that. That's all you're gonna do at this point. Then <clears throat> center the anchor connector plate. <clears throat> it's this winged doodad that's here. You're gonna place this, over th that the vertical line that you just drew is gonna be centered right over this, okay? You're going to place that on there. You're going to mark and drill two eighth of an inch holes into the face of the gate. One about here, one about here. You're going to take, there's only one clevis pin. You're going to take that and stick it through the back of the unit. You're going to stack the two D or the thick plastic washers on top of it. Pardon me. You're going to drill those holes. You're going to put the clevis pin through the back. Then you're going to attach all of this to the face of the gate. Onto that hanging clevis pin, put your two plastic washers your one steel washer and then run the cotter pin down through it. Well, actually not just yet. The, you're going to, but you're going to then attach the anchor plate. Uh, let's see. So you're going to be, you're going to fold the anchor bar back over the clevis pin assembly, which has the two stacked washers, has the steel washer, then you insert the cotter pin to secure that anchor bar to that secured anchor connector bait plate to the face of the gate. And that's how that's all going to be connected. So right now you've got one screw here. You've got the anchor bar hanging with one pin. You've got the connector plate attached to the face of the gate. And then you've got the anchor bar attached to the anchor connector plate via the clevis pin and it's being held in with the cotter pin. Um, and that's how that is. So let's let's back that up. Center the anchor connector plate on the three-quarter mark, drill the two holes, insert the clevis pin into the vertical slot, and then attach the anchor plate with the two 5-8 screws. They mean length. They're 5 eighths in length. Two plastic washers onto the pin. Swing the anchor bar over the anchor connector plate so that the clevis pin goes through the slot. So the anchor bar goes on top of the two plastic washers. So it'll be clevis pin, anchor plate, two plastic washers, then the anchor bar, then your steel washer, then your cotter pin. Place the steel washer onto the steel, onto the clevis pin, and install the cotter pin through the hole in the clevis pin. At this point, you're going to make sure that the um, bar works without binding by swinging the gate open and closed, meaning this entire anchor bar is going to float through its slot connected to the face of the gate by this entire assembly. You want to be gentle with it because you've only got one screw holding it on. However, you're not under spring tension or, or pneumatic, uh, pardon me, hydraulic tension at that point. If it works freely, then put the other three screws in place. Then you're wrapping it up at this point. Locate the speed adjustment knob on the hydraulic spring assembly. It's only on one side. 
with it facing up, align the hinge knuckles into the two remaining areas where you can take those hinge pins, or the hinge bolts they call them. And then secure all three of them down with a nut. There will be three pins here, here, and here, or hinge bolts, and three nuts for those. So secure all of that. Um, Now, step six, open the gate and remove the wing key. There's a weird little piece of metal that's there that's holding it somewhat extended. As you open the gate, that's going to flex open, and that wing key might likely get away from you. Make sure you don't lose it. You'll want it, um, and that's because if you ever need to remove this or service it, you'll need a spacer to hold that open for you. And they say that. Open the gate, remove the wing key from the piston rod, save the wing key, as it may need to be reused. Open the gate, allow the turtle back to close the gate. The speed adjustment knob controls the closing speed of the gate. They say though, you only need an eighth of an inch increment, so turn it ever so slightly and then cycle the gate a few times and make sure you get it set correctly. Rotate the speed adjustment knob clockwise to slow the speed of the gate or counterclockwise to open it, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. And that's, of course, with the speed adjustment knob pointed towards the top of the gate. Place your turtle back cover on, and your installation is complete. It will look like diagram four, as they call out. Some other applications are here. You might need to modify your gate to accept this hardware. You might need a lock strip, some piece of metal to attach it to. That's not unusual. If you have just expanded metal, you're going to need to put something on the face of that expanded metal or the gate structure for it to work. Lots of other applications for their hardware are just shown here. And hopefully that is a reasonable walk through how to install the item without being too brisk, but taking the edge off of, what's this, what's that? You know, the first time I read instructions, it's like I'm less sure of how to install it. But after we go through it, then we have a better idea. The only thing I wish these instructions had was literally a, a bill of materials. List everything that's here, what is it called, and how many, because that's the first step. Do you have all the bolts necessary? If you don't, don't start drilling holes. Let's wrap up this video on camera, but before we do that, there is the rest of the extended description to go through, which is where we were. Lightweight, non-fire rated doors. This is not a fire rated piece of hardware, so don't install it on anything that's fire rated. To retain product warranty and resist gate opening angle, a gate stop must be installed. That's true for all doors, whether it be a gate or a man door. You need to have some means of stopping the door. Um, otherwise, you can break the hardware, break the door, break the surrounding environment, harm to people and property. Must mount on the pull side. Works best if the gate is in line, flush hinges flush with the gate post or one inch or less gap. Um, they're, they're really assuming that your installation one inch or less gap so they're um, what I was saying was they are certainly calculating that you're going to have a gate post and that you're going to have basically a flush condition here basically flush you know if it's not quite flush or it's inset slightly you're going to need to pad that material out so that it works correctly. And I think what the one inch, what they're saying is, you know, depending on the type of hanging device you have, there could be a gap between here. And, and getting outside of one inch, you could have some sort of center hung uh, specialty gate hinge. Uh, they, they're out there, they exist. Um, so not exceeding one inch, I think, is what they're drawing attention to right here. Extended description information. The only thing that's new um, is the 54-inch gate width. Uh, we probably mentioned 125 pounds. The sizes we mentioned. Black steel. It's powder-coated. Maximum degree of opening is 90 degrees. Um, will it likely go marginally greater than that? Uh, nope. Not at all. Not at all, because the apparatus will hit the hinge bracket. Um, so be mindful of that. You're going to get 90 degrees out of this. Minimum operating temperature, 10 degrees. Maximum is 100, 110. That could be a challenge if you're in the American Southwest. Um, or in Chicago. 
uh, which is rare to get that sort of temperature. But let me back all that up. You're not gonna, yeah, I, I, I live there. You're not gonna see that temperature of that in my experience, although it feels like it. Uh, when you buy one, we'll ship you one. Spec sheet is here. This is a handy little doodad that gives you an overview of the item, which we've gone over just now in our extended description. Obviously some modification has been done to get this to work on round gates and whatnot. There's of course installation instructions which we just went through. They are packaged with the hardware. Then finally, there is a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the lock key items that we sell, and if you know that name at all, you probably do for their combination locks. Um, if you're studying for any sort of locksmithing accreditation, you'll need to be familiar with lock key locks and um, how these types of lock function if you're taking the combination elective exam. Um, without studying the stuff, you're going to get those questions wrong. Um, I had to study the stuff to not get the questions wrong is the bottom line. Uh, link to the manufacturer's uh, product catalog. Their website is here. Other encyclopedic documents are here as well. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so if you have any questions on the TB100 gate spring um, assembly or any other lock key item, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, the name Lockheed is not really synonymous with the history of those um, types of combination locks. In the history of combination locks, it's been known by other names, but the pr and it could be just a company name thing. The principle of those combination locks is the same. Um, there will be questions about what code is a null uh, a null value and what is an operating possibility for a code, blue or green or red, whatever it is, perhaps which way you turn to clear a code. You've, you know, if you were studying that material, and I only bring it up because I have, um, you'll have to go through the installation instructions. I don't think you really need a lock uh, to test that stuff, although I have many times. I've, you know, recombinated those things and whatnot. Um, but studying the installation instructions would certainly get you there. And then, of course, they have their, some of their gate hardware that's here. Uh, this material is generally kept in stock, so the lead time would be relatively short. And if you have any questions on the TB100 or any other lock key product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.